that are dedicated to these sectors. I would invite the, the, the Saudi uh, government and the Saudi associations to uh, be involved in this program. And also it's important to know that we are ready to do it in cooperation with our uh, embassy. Second point, very important, is the cooperation with Italian companies in the tourism sector. Tourism, it means resorts, hotel, um, also the, the uh, organization of services related to tourism, to sport events, etc. cetera, where Italy, Italy is uh, uh, well renewed all over the world for this capability. All the, uh, the activity related to the design, to the uh, architecture, to the infrastructure that are related to this area. Italy uh, is uh, the cradle of the world and the historical cradle of the world for this, uh, all these sectors. And this is one of the reasons because today we have all these Italian companies that are more than 100 Italian companies involved in this, uh, in this uh, um, webinar. And I hope that also uh, I will listen the, the presentation of the RCU, the Royal Commission of ULA, to know better how we can help the uh, Saudi government to uh, enhance and foster the relations with Italian companies and, and to try to achieve good results for this project. I think that, uh, as I was talking with the Ambassador Cantone a few minutes ago, we have all the expertise, we have all the capabilities, and uh, but aside uh, uh, of it, we have all the. Um, we are very keen to participate to this project. We will be involved also in this project. Uh, our financial institutions, banks, uh, the, the 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 Italian organization related with the financial support for investment abroad. That I, I'm I, I'm sure that are already involved through our embassy and through our office in, uh, in Riyadh, but also I hope that uh, since today we can establish this, uh, this channel, special channel of communication uh, between uh, us here uh, in Italy, in our organization in Italy and company in Italy and uh, the Saudi companies and uh, institutions. Um, I'm very interested to continue to listen all the information that uh, we will receive from, uh, from the Royal Commission of ULA, and uh, we are ready also to continue when it will be possible uh, to, uh, to visit uh, Alulia area. That is very, very interesting. We have seen the, the, um, the video a few minutes ago, but will be much more interesting to, to get more information directly on site. And uh, I hope that uh, in the next uh, months, in the coming months, we will have this uh, opportunity. Thanks uh, uh, again, and I'm uh, glad to give the floor to again to Enrico Barbieri and to listen uh, the, the the presentation of Mr. Sherbeni and Mrs. Barbone to to know more about uh, the investment in the Alula area. Thanks. Many thanks to the CEO of the Italian Trade Agency. And now we, we have the speech of the representative of the Royal Commission for Alula. So many thanks, uh, Mr. Hamed Sharbeni, for the cooperation uh, in uh, organizing this very interesting webinar. And uh, I leave uh, you the, the floor. Hello, hello everyone, and, and good morning and good afternoon. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Ambassador and Dr. Uh, Roberto for the welcoming remarks. And it's very exciting for us to be presenting. Uh, Excuse me, Mr. Sarbani, can you turn on your camera, please? Thanks. Oh, I, I apologize for the connection issues. That's what wouldn't allow me to uh, be able to put in the camera on. Uh, but I would like to continue like this, if you don't mind. Sure. So, uh, it's very exciting to be presenting an oil development project uh, to the audience. The project has been uh, a key driver of the, gov uh, of the government efforts to uh, develop the tourism sector in Saudi Arabia, capitalizing on a very unique site and a very unique destination that has been home for several civilizations that dates back 2000 and 2500 years ago that all lived in that cultural oasis and left their legacy uh, on the place. Um, the government has a very ambitious program to develop that destination. 
They are looking to target attracting 2 million visitors annually by year 2035. We have managed in the past few years to increase the number of visitors to the place up to 60,000 visitors annually. And we are looking to achieve 250,000 visitors by 2023. We already have invested heavily in infrastructure around that area. We have built two hotels and built certain cultural assets that would serve as an attraction point to our visitors, in addition to the existing uh, cultural and uh, archaeological heritage that we have in the place. Uh, a part of that development program, we have def uh, definitely a lot of the sectors that was mentioned er uh, earlier as target for our development in hospitality, in residential, uh, and of course, the infrastructure that's supporting those developments. Uh, additionally, we are looking for investments in culture and in um, uh, uh, entertainment activities that are related to the, uh, to the tourism sector, which we believe that Italy in general and Italian companies have a lot of expertise and contribution that can provide to those, uh, to those sectors. Um, and we are looking forward to answer any questions or respond to any uh, inquiries from your, from the team. We thank you everybody for joining and we're looking forward to it. Many thanks, uh, Mr. Sharbeni. And uh, I would like to introduce uh, the next uh, speaker who is not uh, Silvia Barbone because we just had um, just had uh, the information that she cannot participate. So there will be Mr. Nasser al Katani, manager of the Intergovernmental Partnership with Italy. So please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Enrico. Can you see my slides? Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, thank you, everyone. I'm, I'm so glad to see there is an interest from the uh, Italian com companies to join. Thank you, uh, uh, Ambassador Cantoni. Thank you for the Italian uh, Trade Agency for co-hosting this uh, event. Uh, I will uh, explain today strategically why we prioritize Italian as a, a potential strategic yeah. partner. Mi do quando devo 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 switchare. Okay, I'll continue. Yeah, for to prioritize the, the uh, uh, Italy as uh, uh, a potential strategic partner for Al Ula and why uh, now, and how to engage with the private sector from now on. <clears throat> so we selected Italy as a, a strategic partner after we received the endorsement from our leadership to put Italy as one of the top targeted countries. And we did uh, at the partnership department, the uh, analysis to uh, prove that Italy is the right partner and the priority for uh, 2021 for us. The, our vision for this is to turn Al Ula County into an outstanding uh, global destination and as uh, uh, as Mr. Uh, Rongo explained, to benefit from Italy, remarkable excellence and exper uh, ex experience through transferring the uh, skills, the best technology and expertise. Uh, we are looking here to partnerships. We are not looking only about, you know, supplier or a transaction. We are looking at the partnerships component which is uh, uh, beyond supply or transaction to have uh, uh, assets on the ground to enhance the local content and also to transfer the knowledge and building the capacity for the local community. We did our homework through this research, primary research and interviews with many stakeholders and meeting with uh, uh, several sectors. We are now at the designing phase. And this slide show you as a dashboard of the effort we have done so far in, in providing to our leadership 
why Italy is the right partner now. We did a comprehensive analysis of the country assessment. We did the market assessment and we investigate the partnerships uh, best model in Italy and the best practices, including the stakeholders analysis and identifying 16s uh, event that we can uh, potentially participate in the future. This through uh, several important meetings with the ministries and we conducted uh, and completed two phases out of four phases that we do here in RCU to decide and to confirm who should be our uh, selected uh, strategic partner in, in the future. This uh, selection triggered by a visit of our uh, CEO and leadership uh, in 2018 or 2019 to Matera City and Pompeii site. We identify 10 cooperation area that we can cooperate with Italy, uh, heritage and archeology, span art, culture, architect and design, food, sport, tourism, construction, agriculture, nature, research, and education. The left side of the dashboard is the effort we are doing uh, to make sure we build the foundation with the uh, government entities to make uh, a smooth engagement with the private sector and with all of you uh, showing interest today to develop uh, an ULA project. I will highlight the importance of this, the relationship between Italy and KSA. Uh, uh, I will, uh, this slide indicate the economic indicator of Italy for us. The GDP is 2 trillion and the population is 60 million, which uh, indicate uh, the, the almost double of Saudi GDP and almost double of our population, despite the fact it's seven times smaller than KSA. As, uh, as His Excellency Rongo indicated, Italy has the expertise, they are number one in many sectors. They are number one in UNESCO uh, World Heritage, in uh, uh, 50 sites, in culture sites and five in natural, one of top five global destination, one of top uh, 10 adventure travel food uh, and culture tourism. And they are famous of their soft power through culture. We have uh, our relationship between Italy and uh, uh, with uh, Italy goes back to 1932, where we celebrate the foundation of our uh, friendship. It goes all the way until this, uh, I mean, this year we have uh, emerging dimension of our relationship. It's not limited to the economy, but also there is uh, a culture uh, cooperation. There is intention from Italy to be uh, part. And uh, the bilateral trade between the two countries uh, indicate 35 uh, billion SAR volume in a trade. Uh, this put Italy one of the top uh, 10 uh, bi bilateral, uh, bilateral uh, trade uh, destination. Italy also consider KSA is the gate and uh, for the GCC uh, businesses. This slide shows the presence of uh, uh, Italy companies. Uh, we have 141 licensed uh, company in KSA. You see here uh, many uh, companies logos, uh, but I'm looking forward in the next uh, uh, years and uh, months and years to see more uh, uh, slides and uh, logos about the Italian company presence in KSA uh, in particular in Al, Al Ula. 17 uh, uh, Italian companies with a big presence, eight of, in, in uh, 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 architecture, five in construction, two in engineering and design, and one in defense and one in uh, uh, agriculture. There are culture aspects also. There is a mission from Italy uh, in Saudi Arabia, and there is multiple stakeholders engagement. When it comes to the presence in Al Ula itself, we have here the beloved uh, Mariah concert Hall is designed by uh, uh, Italian architect, and now it's managed by uh, Italian uh, expert. And we have an RCU uh, uh, about ten Italian who is uh, representing uh, Italy in Al Ula uh, to develop uh, our ambition projects. We have active engagement with multiple stakeholders, with universities, 
uh, especially in two flagships initiatives that we have. Uh, as uh, my colleague uh, Melanie will explain about marketing and uh, destination, we have a PR and marketing agency appointed in Italy, shows the interest that we, you know, and, uh, and evidence that we need to see more presence of Italian uh, in Al Ula. The rationale for uh, the partnerships, I won't go through uh, the details due to the uh, time, but I would like to highlight one things that's our, uh, uh, this is uh, start of the, our engagement with the uh, private sector. And I would like uh, during this workshop to uh, propose the way forward, how we would like to engage uh, uh, with each other. And of course you can reach out to partnerships uh, later on. Uh, again, I would like to uh, uh, thank uh, uh, His Excellency, the ambassador and the trade agency for hosting this and thank you for showing the interest today in Al Ula and to see you inshallah soon to develop this project. Thank you so much. So many thanks Mr. Nasser Al Katani for your interesting overview on uh, South Italian relationships. I would like now to give the floor to uh, Melani De Souza who is the executive director of Destination Marketing. This is the first part of the more technical speeches uh, on vision for Alula, the world's masterpiece. And uh, uh, just a, a brief comment because we are a little late on the schedule around 15 minutes. So I kindly ask you to uh, stay if possible within the, the time. I understand that, that there are so many things to say regarding Alula, but uh, please, if you can, uh, um, if you can stay in, uh, in, in the time, in the schedule, it's, it's better for, uh, for, for all because it's still uh, quite long. Anyway, thanks a lot. And uh, please, uh, uh, I give the floor to Miss Melani de Souza. Thank you, Enrico. And I was asking for a film to be shown before I actually do my PowerPoint presentation. Do you think we could go to the film? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yes, it's OK. Yeah, please. So I'm not sure who's handling that because I sent it on to you to show. Yes, yeah, it's coming. Yeah. 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 وبزمان اللحظة تحيا شجوني والفي على بابك والقلب يلفاك وهذا الصخر ينبض بلقياك أمشي وكفي صافح صفحة هضابك حبات الرمل تهمس تعال هلابك أدري إني أسيرة حضورك وبنسى خطوتي بين فيافي غرورك لك في فؤادي هيبة ورغبة وسمت بلحظة أتخيلك وغمض جفوني عيون القلب هي اللي تشوفك مو عيوني لأنك مكان يهدينا رحلة لأعظم تحفة عرفها الزمن Please, Melanie, the floor is yours. Yes. Um, Your Excellency, the Ambassador, ladies and gentlemen, buongiorno. Um, can you see my screen? We can, yes. Just one second. I just need to make sure I'm on the right one. Okay, great.
So it's my great pleasure to talk about um, Alola and give you a general destination overview. Um, uh, I obviously head up the marketing and as uh, has been said, we are very clearly prioritizing Italy for inbound travel. Um, we have Martin Engel uh, and Associates um, representing us in this country. And it's very much about how we engage our travel trade, the airlines and our media to build the profile of Anula. But for those of you who want to know more about the destination, um, I guess um, my next few minutes is all about educating you more about what we're about. So for those of you who just want to place the destination geographically, it's in the Northwest of Saudi Arabia, connected at the moment by flights from Riyadh, from Jeddah and Dammam. And I'm pleased to say that we've recently had not just Saudia service us, but also um, we have Flynas who have just started um, services for the next few weeks and with whom we're engaging for ongoing air capacity. So, um, 1,000 kilometers Melanie, northwest. Hello, Melanie. Yes. Kate. Um, we're still on the first slide. I don't know if you're going through. Oh, I am. Okay, we'll try again. You have yes. to kind of where the, you click on it. So, can you see that one? Has it, has it moved over? No, it's still the same first. I think maybe make it a full page and then. Okay, let's try this again. Um, is that moving? No, I would unshare and do it again. Okay. That's moving. No, no, this is the wrong one. So sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. um, sorry, guys, I'll be a second. I'm just going to try this one more time. Can you see this? Can you see this? No, yeah, no, no, no. Now it's sharing. Okay, great. So we might just go straight here to um, this slide that talks about how we're a thousand kilometers northwest of Riyadh, population of 45,000. And I think one must never forget that as much as we are a tourism destination, we have a, a, a local population who call Alula home and for whom I guess as a city, the way the infrastructure pans out going forward is going to be really critical. In terms of size, we always talk about Alula being the size of Belgium, 25,000 square kilometers. Um, most importantly, um, this is a place that is of global heritage significance, uh, 8,000 years of civilization and history. And uh, while I don't expect you all to take in the detail of this slide, what we have here with Alola is a um, a place that has been at the crossroads of the caravan routes, it's synonymous with the incense route, and it has played home to ancient civilizations over the millennia. Um, what we have in this chart is really the um, juxtaposition, if you like, of all the various um, civilizations that have called Alola home, um, I guess represented against what is a global calendar of major events as they have unfolded. I think the civilizations that we mostly want to hone in on are the Nabataeans, which of course have been synonymous with Petra for many years, but more importantly, the North Arabian kingdoms about whom not much is known and for whom the uh, Dadan and Leonite um, uh, kingdoms in particular represent not just great archeological um, opportunities, but certainly a tourism experience. Um, the fact that um, Alola is home to um, a significant amount of what I would call agricultural uh, type industries. We have 2.3 million palm trees alone, um, 29 types of citrus. And in the context of fauna, uh, this was uh, the landscape that played home to the Arabian leopard. And there's much work afoot to actually 
um, conserve uh, uh, this species that has been on the decline. And most importantly, as a precursor to that, we're looking at ways in which to get the environment and Shiran Nature Reserve in particular uh, um, back to, if you like, uh, embodying the kind of uh, crops and uh, habitat that would have been conducive to this particular species. We have a very grand vision for Alola with ambitious infrastructure plans, as has already been talked about. Um, and if we define the vision in short, we talk about us as a living museum, the size of a country where each rock is a testimony, each place a gallery and each journey an exhibition. Our mission is really about creating the world's most desired boutique heritage and cultural destination. We're not about mass tourism. We want to learn from the, the, the um, case studies of over tourism. And at the end of the day, we're about offering people transformative experiences and setting the standard most importantly for authentic luxury hospitality. So we're definitely after the aspirational traveler. These figures have been talked about. We have a modest target of 2 million visitors by 2032. Um, this is obviously our, our majestic location of Hegra, um, where we have a over 100 beautifully preserved tombs. Um, the site of Hegra was perhaps the southernmost outpost of the Roman Empire. And uh, there is a rich story to be told, not just of the lives and times of Nabataeans, but more importantly, their whole preoccupation with um, burials and the afterlife. So in terms of our key messages, these are our four brand pillars, heritage, nature, arts and culture, and adventure. And you'll see that in terms of the way we are thinking about our experiences, they're very much in line with these themes, as is our events calendar. Importantly, in terms of hotels, um, we've got a very ambitious plan for building out room inventory. We currently have over 15 experiences and at a very minimum, we're aiming for three nights stay. And we talk about aspirational travelers that span um, everything from couples, friends to family groups. Um, I've talked air capacity, so I'm just going to scan over that and hone in on what is current room stock, which by all um, uh, intents and purposes is very, very limited as we speak on the ground, but with very ambitious plans to attract flagship hotel brands, everything from um, Four Seasons to um, Amman to the beautiful architectural marvel that I have no doubt the Jean Nouvel Resort will be. So as we stand at the moment, this is uh, a new property coming online, we hope this year, Habitas aimed at the millennial segment, 100 Keys opening in September, Banyan Tree, which is going to be the newly classified Ashar Hotel, five stars, 82 keys. And then importantly, um, some of the, the really high quality brands that I referenced earlier and that will open in 2023 and beyond. So we talked to Mariah, the largest mirrored building in the world. Uh, again, that is very much in sync with our plans to be a regular venue on um, the entertainment circuit in this part of the world. But we also have ambitious plans for business tourism or MICE, meetings, incentives, conferences, and exhibitions. And this is the most stunning venue in terms of um, just its pure physical appeal and the fact that it's situated where in its exteriors you see our magnificent landscapes reflected. Um, I'll just quickly touch on our heritage and culture. We reference the Nabataeans, the North Arabian Kingdom of Dadan, of Jabal Ikma, which is a stunning heritage site uh, synonymous with the North Arabian Kingdoms, over 500 uh, beautiful petroglyphs that tell of the lives and times of the civilizations that called this place home. And Old Town, which of course was inhabited uh, from about 700 years ago, is being restored and is a beautiful customer experience. Uh, with the adventure brand pillar, we have everything from horse trails to hikes to buggy rides to zip lines. And then of course, in terms of nature, some beautiful farms which offer a wonderful experience. Um, and stargazing is one element that we are really, really playing up um, to very strong business interest, uh, because obviously this is um, a magical place. And obviously the stars were the early navigation devices for the Arabians right now, even to, to today. 
with events, uh, really not much to say, except that we're again heroing in on our core brand pillars with a very clearly articulated calendar and obviously respectful that in the really hot summer months, it's uh, an emphasis on the indoor and culture in particular. Um, and uh, while I remind us all of our core brand pillars, um, I do want to say that while Alola opened its doors officially to the domestic market in October last year, we did have two very successful concerts under the banner of Winter at Tantora in the two preceding years. And we have strong ambitions to really grow out our cultural um, offering. Um, and here are some of the events that were held as part of Winter at Tantora, celebrating our rich Arabian horse heritage. Obviously the Alola skies with ballooning, Desert X with um, in the cultural space and an eco trail. And I know we're tight on time. So Enrico, I hope that um, that suffices. Okay, well, thanks a lot, uh, Melanie, for, for the speak and uh, for the timing, which is very good. And uh, we still have four speeches. They should last five minutes each. So <clears throat> that we may give uh, the word also to the participants for the Q&A session. So I hope we can stay within the, the schedule. I now leave the word to um, Joanna Esti, which is who is an infrastructure and mobility advisor. Uh, so this is the part two regarding infrastructure development opportunities. After this speech, we will have a short session, a short Q&A session for the companies interested in this first part. So I, I leave uh, the, the floor to Joanna Esti, please. Thank you very much. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen. Can you all see my screen? Yes, okay. yes thank you. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome and good afternoon. I'm here to address Alula's infrastructure and transportation efforts. RCU follows its charter and its strategic principles in um, as a framework for its infrastructure and transportation development. Alula is being turned into a living museum as Melanie has explained to you previously. And we, it's uh, pivotal for us to be able to support with upgraded infrastructure and transportation, the efforts that are ongoing in the different areas that Melanie mentioned. Our strategic principles, we have 12. And we look at, in terms of uh, infrastructure, we look at four of them principally. Uh, principle six is connectivity. Principle nine is imaginative inf infrastructure. And certainly with imaginative infrastructure comes also invisible infrastructure to maintain our beautiful vistas. We also look forward to designing safety, safe and healthy uh, products within a circular economy focus. And we practice anticipatory design. We also have thought leaders among our infrastructure subject matter experts. So they, we look to uh, innovative systems that are robust enough to be able to deploy in a tourism destination but our forward thinking. The infrastructure design approach is a very agile approach. We have master planning efforts that look forward to supporting each type of infrastructure. We focus on shortened development cycles and real-time adjustment for changes in development and growth. We, it is uh, an alignment of our infrastructure planning with our festivals and uh, critical path issues, financing, and also operations and maintenance. We are a uh, brownfield site as well as a greenfield site. And so it presents challenges for us in supporting the existing uh, ongoing efforts that we have of the resident population and the development at the same time that we were, are growing out the area. For power, the current state of power is we do have enough uh, fossil fuel generation coming into Alula to be able to tap into it. But we are looking forward into uh, towards bringing in renewables and we are investigating and have ongoing programs for geothermal. 
Uh, we've just last, uh, launched our first RFP in the geothermal area for support of one of our uh, showcase developments, the Sharan Reserve. Um, we also are looking to uh, underground our um, upgraded system so that it won't interfere with our beautiful vistas. For potable water networks, we are lucky because we are uh, located on a very large underground aquifer. It's a fossil aquifer called the Sock Aquifer. And so the, our focus currently is uh, moving towards an agricultural mix that will allow us to have between potable water and agricultural water, a balance on the Sock Aquifer so that our uh, uptake rate is, is uh, the same as um, our, our refresh rate. And we're moving towards that now, but we're deploying very forward thinking technologies to get us there. And we are also tying into a de desalination system that will allow us a backup with, for potable water in the event that uh, we have uh, too much drawdown from the agriculture we are planning. As Melanie mentioned, we're looking at making the Alula area um, focused for, for uh, product branding in agriculture and different uh, market sectors. And so we don't wanna compromise the ability to do that with uh, restrictions on water. And we're looking to put in a very, um, a very robust water conservation program. Our wastewater systems are uh, subpar currently. We, there's an existing wastewater treatment plant that's never been fully commissioned. We're looking at commissioning it now and also upgrading it within phase one by the end of 2023. Our solid waste programs are underway. We're building a resource management park that will uh, have a construction and demolition waste uh, recycle facility. We're looking at waste to energy opportunities. So if you know any, please, please uh, make yourself available to us. We'll be taking a look at that. Um, we're, we're creating um, a hazardous waste facility and we're also looking at the potential for a regional recycling facility. Our digital systems um, are very much uh, in the last century and we're bringing them up to current standards. Uh, we have three companies that in Saudi that provide uh, cellular services to us. We're looking into putting in a, uh, an underground ring that will allow for connectivity and also deploying uh, 5G and um, IoT systems to support smart city efforts. Our utility planning is something that we're not doing siloed. We're doing it in, on an open platform to investigate synergies before, between the different types of utilities uh, so that we can provide our user base with access to the most current uh, power sources, telecommunication, water, recycling water, and wastewater. We are looking at Alula as a, a livability in a smart city. So we want to be able, as we develop these systems, we want to be able to optimize the smart city connection and, and develop an ecosystem that will be a showcase for uh, heritage, archaeology, and tourism. As I said, our objectives are, are um, well placed within quality of life and, and uh, a quality of, of business and, and success of business. And we, we project a livability uh, map that we are employing as we're building out our systems. Thank you very much for this opportunity to present. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Well, thank you very much, uh, Joanna. And uh, it has been very, very interesting, this uh, part regarding infrastructure. So now um, there should be some questions, but I don't know if uh, uh, maybe as there are not so many, uh, maybe it's better to proceed. And so that we can, we can have uh, all the questions at, uh, at, the, at the end. So let's go ahead and uh, we, we arrive at the part three, focus on design management. So I, I leave the floor to uh, Samantha Cotterell, who is executive director of design and management of uh, Royal Commission, please. 
Uh, hello, everybody. This is actually Kate Hall tipping, and I think there's been a little bit of a change in the program because I don't think Samantha's here yet. So I'm going to talk about art and creative industries. So if you don't mind, I'll load up and go ahead. Please do. That's okay. Thank you. Okay. Hold on one second. Let's get the first slide. And let's hope you are all seeing this. Are you all seeing this? Yes, we can see it. Thank you, Kate. I'll do a Okay, is that full screen, everyone? Yes, it is. Yes, thank you. Perfect. Um, so I'm just going to uh, hold on. And get rid of my screen so I can see it properly. So hello, uh, my name is Kate and I work for RCU in the Art and Creative Industries Division. And our remit is to reinvigorate the arts and culture industries and thereby enriching the lives of Alula's residents. Not going to the next page. Oh, hang on. All right, sorry, I wasn't clicking. So you've seen this slide a little bit before. Um, uh, this is especially relevant for Alula. Um, our historical content, context lo located on the Incense Road which linked Southern Arabia to the Mediterranean and Italy uh, being a primary destination as we know. So Alula has been on this crossroads for culture for centuries. And so it's been a place that connected Arabia to the world and also the world to Arabia. So building on the cultural and natural assets of Alula, we have a clear mandate to realize the dynamic value of the arts delivering destinations, programs, events, and also obviously quite importantly, powering an ecosystem of cultural production for our communities living here with us in, in Alula. So this is the work that we did over a recent master plan, which we called the Core Heritage Area MP1. And um, the heart of our focus in the um, arts and creative industries is, is here in this historic crossroads where the old town on the bottom left connects to the historic oasis. And we've identified some prior priority placemaking capital projects here, a series of cultural landmarks that together support our journey to revitalize this crossroads of art and creativity. So I'm, oh, sorry, my screen is, I, I'm having a jumping screen today. Um, so I'm just, we, we obviously we have lots of projects, but I'm going to take you through just a few to give you a feel of what we're really focusing on now at the moment. So the Perspectives Galleries is going to be our flagship institution for art in the heart of the cultural oasis. It'll be a pioneering contemporary art museum, offering a collection of 21st century works with a changing exhibition program, but keeping Arabia at its heart. So we want to begin in the desert and radiate out globally. So it will be a Arabian artists talking to in, and in dialogue with global art. Uh, we want to have flexible spaces for both temporary and permanent exhibitions. This was a bit of rendering work that was done over the development of the master plan. So. This is very early conceptual for what the feeling of the museum might be like uh, within that oasis. Uh, the idea was to have an archipelago of gallery pavilions and courtyards so visitors could access the museum along different pathways hidden with underneath the canopy um, of the palm grove with a few elements peeking out over the top. And we've just finished the rebirth zero of this project and are now working on finalizing the brief within the master plan. So another of our key museum projects, I mean, I think um, so we have a total of five museum projects in Alola, but I'm just going to just do an introduction of two of them. 
Uh, this is the Incense Museum and Gardens um, that will cover the history, ritual, science, and art of incense. It will be a place to understand, of course, the historic incense road, telling the interconnected stories of incense as a source of power and sp spirituality. But we also want it to be a sensory experience. So we'll have collections and also curated gardens. A little bit further down on the incense road, you'll come across the arts district. So these, are, these areas are very near to each other, very easy and accessible by foot. This is gonna be a pri primarily a walking area. So here we have the arts district, and this is located in the village of Al Jadida, which, which exists today. And we'd like this to become an activated heartland for the arts, for residents, tourists, artists, musicians from all over the world. It will support the development of a sustainable and creative artisan and design industry that reflects the unique cultural identity of Alula. We'd like it to be the pulse of the new district of art, uh, full of energy, creative, create, excuse me, creativity and life. And we're looking to develop three key projects, the Alula Academy of the Arts, the Madrasat Adira, and the Alula Arts Foundation in the central, center of the hub, uh, complemented by private galleries, shops, restaurants, and so on. So here is just some of the projects, and we call them incubating projects because they're the ones that we're really working and focusing on now. So Madrasat Deer is, is one of our key ones. And also we have, uh, we're doing quite a lot of work of cultural retail, and we have five shops that are opening up across uh, the sort of core heritage area of Alula. And we've started looking at, together with DMMO, having an Alula Arts Festival and we already had one, uh, the first Desert X uh, with um, uh, a project with um, Desert X in California in 2020. And we're looking to do another one, uh, but we're also looking at other exhibitions, different cultural exchanges and some events. So in, uh, this is Madrasa Adira, which actually means the old girls school and everybody wanted to keep that name, the community. So, so um, which we think is rather lovely. Um, so we have some programs currently run, running under Madrasa Adira, and this is really about skill built building and, and sort of driving new possibilities. And as um, uh, um, uh, uh, Melanie said, uh, Alula is a town of 45,000 people, but with a lot of them are young and engaged populations. So we've had a great turnout and lots of people have been super interested in our courses. So it's a really great and encouraging beginning. Here's just some examples of the programs we're currently running in basket weaving, wood and stone techniques, ceramic, wood felting and embroidery. And uh, we also did some Ferrandi training and there's going to be more um, in culinary arts, sculpture, perfume, cinema with different types of studios. We're now working on an art residency program, developing exhibitions, looking at multimedia. And as I mentioned before, um, cultural retail is going to be really important for us and developing an artisanal industry with, with a strong supply chain. So we really need to start looking for a network of artisans and, and also processes, people that can help us develop this industry, which is really important across a broad range of materials and product groups, leather, ceramics, textiles, precious metals, uh, and we'd like uh, international people to collaborate with our Saudi artisans to produce some co-branded collections. And uh, we're in the early stages of uh, developing concepts for the Alula Arts Festival. And uh, we see this as, and, and, and within that, we've started developing temporary exhibitions that will be both indoor and out, as well as linked events and symposia. Uh, so I think that's it. This is a really sort of gallop through um, all the projects we're doing, but I hope it gives you a good overview of some of the areas we're focusing on. And we're very much looking forward to engaging and talking with you, uh, with you soon, hopefully. So many thanks, Kate, and uh, very, very interesting.
And uh, I think that now uh, Samantha, Samantha Cotterell is, is uh, with us. So if it's okay, I would leave uh, her the, the ground for her speech on uh, design management. Samantha Cotterell is the executive director of design and management of the RCU. Um, hello, Enrico and team. Thank you very much. It's nice to meet you. Um, I actually don't have slides to share, but I thought I'll just talk to, mainly because I've, um, yeah, anyway, I don't have slides to share, but I would like to talk to you a little bit about the um, opportunities and what we're doing um, here at RCU. So we, in, at the end of last year, we um, completed a big exercise which involved defining a master plan uh, which um, seals, let's say, um, the vision for our Lola and how we're going to develop it um, in the coming years. And um, that's been branded the journey through time, which represents um, our, an, our, our approach to um, making sure that we value what we've inherited from people and civilizations in past and we acknowledge our moment in time and what we are going to leave in the, in the future to generations to come. The basis of the uh, Journey Through Time project is, is the, the concept centers around the notion of a cultural landscape, um, which is also UNESCO um, um, concept. And it aims to um, celebrate the relationship between man and nature and Alola being obviously um, one of the, the best places to explore that notion. So um, that sets the context, let's say, in the framework. And there's a lot of interesting things to review in that. And for anyone who's interested, we can organize a separate um, presentation on exactly what that content is. Um, as we develop the detailed version of this master plan, there are a number of assets that are developing and coming out of um, this, this master plan including, um, I'm sure Kate just spoke about the cultural assets, different museums and art galleries. Um, we have a, a range of hotels. We have a um, range of um, civic buildings and um, a, lot of, a lot of residential and mixed use development as well. So the way we're approaching the plan is that we're trying to seed different areas of the master plan. So instead of, putting everything on paper and then rolling out the projects where as we design the master plan, we're identifying small areas of each of the, the villages or components of the master plan and we're um, peeling out assets to develop now. And they're meant to be um, the seeds to make the area grow so that we're encouraging organic growth of all types of businesses around that particular asset. So um, as part of the master plan, we are approaching uh, very different zones. We have the old town. I'm not sure how many people are familiar with it, but it's the, the part that is basically a ruin, but we've been we've now brought part of it to life, and that's an ongoing effort, um, which has now facilitated a lot of businesses. So there's work, a lot of work around restoration. Uh, we're always looking for um, companies who um, can add that kind of... Um, intelligence to our, to our journey in, in, in the built environment. Um, we have um, an area that is less old and less in ruins, but still an old part of town, which is called Al Jadida, and that intends to be the art district. And we're currently looking to develop different, different parts of that um, project. Uh, that's a lot of, some of it's restoration work, some of it's demolition, um, some of it's brownfield and are going to be built up from scratch. So we're very interested in companies who can, um, well, first of all, help deliver the vision of an, of an, art, of an art district. Um, but um, there's a, let's say there's probably an opportunity in this area to do something to align with um, other entities in Italy, such as the Salone del Mobile, or you know, a lot of everything that's all things design Italia, because um, that would, I mean, anything from partnerships to um, specific um, um, outfits in terms of su supplying uh, anything in building materials to, to furniture, to, um, to industrial, anything in industrial design as well. Um, as part of that uh, district, we just, I'm mentioning Salon El Mobile also because we have a, 
maybe again, Kate touched on this, there's um, going to be a, um, an arts festival next year and part of it will be dedicated to architecture and design. So um, we're looking to explore how we might bring that, um, how we might bring that program to life um, with international partnerships um, such, such as this. Um, we then have different, uh, we then have, let's say, central, um, we have a, a second master plan, uh, which develops a more urban environment. And that's the, that's the reestablishment and the realignment of Alola as a, as a city and a, and, and a town, which reorganizes everything from the civic buildings to the main commercial areas. So there's a lot of generic design, building and construction uh, going on there. And um, we're looking for partners in all aspects from building materials to construction companies to architects, um, uh, all of which I uh, know Italy does very well. Um, we have a number of, um, um, in, in the desert zone, in, in, in the northern area, let's say, is part of the key, some of the key parts of the journey through time. We have, um, we have outdoor theatres, we have a lot of, uh, we have desert resorts, a lot of hospitality offerings. And um, of course we have um, an oasis where, which would call for different type of um, interventions. We have a, anything from an echo lodge to uh, Amman hotels. There's a bit of um, different parts of the scale. So again, looking for um, anything that can contribute to delivering uh, the, built, the built form of these entities. Um, and we also have um, something very interesting that we're, we're doing at the moment is a competition to identify the top 100 architects in the world. So we're about to launch a competition on the 1st of May um, to identify 100 architects for 100 residences. And um, the, there's, there are different typologies have been put out. We have an urban residence, an oasis residence, a desert residence, um, and a rock residence, because of course we address, we have to address that part of things um, here. And um, apart from identifying the top architects, this is, th these, these designs are meant to be, um, they're aimed at creating, uh, sort of changing or contributing to what, what the residents would be in Alola and what is a residence um, with the changes that have happened in the world. It's, it's got a lot of other issues, a lot of other um, aspects beyond just simply designing something that looks good. And we want to, um, all that's going to come together in a symposium next, next spring on architecture, which would be, it intends to be the first symposium on a maybe yearly or bi-yearly um, basis. Uh, to bring architects to Alola. So <clears throat> we are also trying to establish uh, beyond what we deliver as designs and master plans, we're trying to establish an architectural community, architecture and design community in Alola, um, make it the place of architecture and design or a place of architecture and design. And um, so there's a number of initiatives uh, uh, that we're looking to do with other partners, including universities to um, study um, you know, innovation in the field of the built environment. So we're very interested in the 3D printing aspects, um, new building materials, and even coming to trying to determine what a new building material would be since um, the way in which we build today is, is being changed by robotics. Then what are the materials that we can use and how can we play into the sustainability uh, um, factor as well, you know. So we're interested in all that kind of thinking that will then um, build a good knowledge center for us to access um, and and to feed all our the broad all our projects and the broader picture. So I think that's that's um, pretty much an overview. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Really, thanks, uh, Samantha. I think we are a little late on the schedule. Anyway, we have now the last speech, but uh, um, let me say something because uh, I think that probably what I said before- in, was Enrico, your heard. camera is off. Enrico, turn on your camera, please. Excuse me, oh, sorry, yes. Yes, because uh, as I said, uh, uh, probably the, my PC had a break before 
you could hear what I was saying regarding uh, the, um, the materials. So let me specify that uh, um, this webinar is quite special opportunity uh, to have an insight on the, on the key development regarding uh, Alula for the next 10, 15 years. So uh, for this reason, the presentations uh, show today cannot be uh, shared at the moment, uh, given the confidentiality of some of the information presented. So this is, I think it's important for you to know. Uh, the other thing is regarding the, the question and uh, mm, please uh, ask after the, the last uh, speech uh, on procurement, uh, um, I kindly ask you to, to ask a question if possible regarding the, the projects and the contents of the speeches and avoid more personal questions concerning your specific activity. So this is important because otherwise, I mean, uh, it's not uh, something of general interest and uh, you, you could then uh, um, ask uh, uh, more specific questions regarding your activity in, in the follow-up. So uh, now let's go ahead with the, with the last uh, speech and uh, I leave the floor to Ayman Bagawi, Executive Director of Procurement. Please, I leave you the floor. Uh, thank you very much. Um... Uh, I will not take much time uh, from uh, all the audience uh, time. Uh, I think we, we, we saw a lot in the previous presentations in reference to what Al-Ula is and what Al-Ula is aiming to be uh, from uh, different aspects. Uh, in the Royal Commission for Al-Ula, we are very keen on competition and to engage with multiple uh, uh, layers, uh, with uh, local, regional, and international players. So we are global in everything. So, and we have a lot of uh, global partnership with a lot of organizations. Uh, the Royal Commissions for Al Ula is uh, having its own bylaws and regulations which regulate its procurement activities. And uh, uh, as part of our efforts uh, to be, uh, you know, to, to give integrity, to give uh, transparency to the stakeholders, we are. Uh, working on automations uh, and to automate the overall procurement cycle end to end. Uh, definitely, we have uh, a, a big variety of uh, opportunities to work with RCU. We are intending to spend around 20 billion US dollars up to uh, 2035 uh, to achieve all these uh, interesting projects which you saw. Uh, definitely, uh, for any uh, interested organizations, we do have. Uh, uh, an online portal to be registered with RCU in any certain community or category. And uh, uh, I will leave uh, uh, the floor to Mr. Mohammed Arghati to give just a quick overview. He's the head of procurement excellence. He will share a video uh, on the registration process. And also we will uh, share in the chat the link for uh, uh, the registration process. Thank you very much. And uh, if you have any questions, I will be more than delighted to uh, answer it. Hello, everyone, and uh, good morning or good afternoon. My name is Mohammed Argeti. I'm representing the Royal Commission for Al Ula uh, along with Mr. Ayman from the procurement side. We would like to um, welcome everyone, including the Italian companies and suppliers uh, and potential partners to register through our supplier portal. If you allow me, I would like to share with you just a quick video. Just hang on for a couple of minutes. Can you see my screen? Yes, thank you so much. Sure. So I'll start the video that explains the process steps for the registration. It started off from the supplier, the Real, Royal Commission for Al-Ula's website.
my apologies maybe there's a time lag due to the uh, network but um, I believe that you saw the video um, and uh, in, in addition to the video I would like to share with you the link that takes you directly to the um, portal where the registration can can be started and um, um, that's it from my end. Thanks, very, thanks everyone. And uh, we look forward to receiving your application. And uh, if you have any questions, we'll be happy to provide the answers. Thank you. Can you share, please, the link? We were not able to see the link. Uh, so maybe you can share it in the chat or in the, uh, that would be great. So everybody can have it. Thanks. Definitely, I will do that. I'll just share the link through the, sh the chat uh, tool. Thank you. Okay, many thanks, Mr. Ayam Bagawi. And now I think we can start with the Q&A session. So I, my colleague from uh, the head office in Rome will show uh, exactly. So this is the first uh, question. For Joanna. Yes, this question is for Joanna. Yes, uh, Enrico, would you like to read it, please? Yes, I would like to deepen the issue of water infrastructures as it would be possible to maximize the use of desalinization and wastewater, wastewater, wastewater treatment also to produce hot water and air conditioning with low cost of 50%. So this is the question, please, Joanna. Th thank you very much. I'm, I'm looking at a statement and I'm asking what the actual question is. If um, in terms of infrastructure and desalination and wastewater, we are looking at ways of conserving water and, um, and repurposing water that has been used so that our overall water loss is minimized. So if you could articulate what the question actually is related to the issue of water infrastructures. Right now we're in the planning stages for our water conservation program. Okay. I think this, the next question is for uh, furniture and that's not for me, that I think would be for uh, probably for Kate it's in terms of um, products. Please, Kate, can you take this question? Uh, okay, um, we are resellers of the Italian most important brands in the high-end furniture mark. How can we join this project? Um, I mean, certainly we'll be always interested to see products, to see um, who's making more. And, and we definitely want to have high-end products we have a lot of hospitality coming, you know, and we're building a large destination. If there are projects that we can combine where there is a, a um, support network for our sort of young and youthful um, Alulans here to give them some kind of capacity building, artisanal trade, understanding, and certainly, you know, we're, we're very interested in building those kinds of more longer term partnerships. Um, but, but definitely we, we're, we're interested in, in both and that's great to see. Okay, thank okay, you. Thank you. Let, let's see the, the, the third question, if there is one. So the question is, my question is about the discovery of old settlements and the conservation of traditional construction techniques and materials. Do you have any ongoing research and or projects for the Alula area? Any ongoing university program involved in the conservation of past traditions and local culture? So this is the question, who can, can please ask to this question? Yeah, I mean, I can, this is Kate, I can probably answer that as, as well. I mean, we, we definitely do. Um, in terms of, I mean, when we first arrived, this is a three-year-old project now here in Alula, and really to understand the cultural heritage of Alula, which is vast from inscriptions to the heritage sites and, 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 
and much of it unknown. So we have had quite a few archaeological projects and different heritage projects, and we have had different organizations uh, in France, Aus Australia, UK, Germany, uh, and but it, the projects are really, really big. So if there are um, research institutions or archaeology institutions or anything in tangible, intangible, I know the archaeology team would love to connect and and hear different views and um, because there's a lot of projects going on and it is a key cornerstone of our it's one of our key projects going on and all of this will be wrapped under something we call the in kingdoms institute uh, so it is really very synonymous with with the identity of the project and, and something something that we really want to continue okay thank you here is the next question one second we were writing some questions up uh, Yes, here it is. Milena Mussi. So Milena Mussi is asking, we are interested in the 100 Architects Competition as being appointed ambassador of Italian design and architects of a man group in Miami. Moreover, we kindly ask if a design firm can cooperate with Alula directly or we should have a partnership with local architects. So. Yeah, okay, I'll take yeah. the question, Samantha. Thanks. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say one thing about the furniture as well. I think one of the key things we will look at doing with, during the design week is give opportunities to um, for companies, top design firms to exhibit their work and take a place um, and bring their um, furniture here as, as you do in the Salon and Mobile. Um, but taking the 100 architects question, sorry, do you mind putting it back on the screen? I want to, I'm not sure what it means being um, appointed ambassador of Italian design and architects of a man group. Um, is this a particular company that's being appointed? I, I'm not quite sure I understand that part of the question if someone wants to elaborate, but um, in terms of being involved, we have, uh, if anyone, if you'd like to suggest, we're shortlisting um, architects. So if you have architects you think would be appropriate to uh, compete in this competition, you can definitely send us a list. We'll go through them and we'll um, add them to the list if, if, if we think it fits the project um, so they could compete. We have already got a number of Italian architects on that list, but I, I would be very interested to see um, what you could suggest. And um, in terms of collaborating with Alula directly, we have different forms of engagement. We're always available to, to, to look at different types of, um, uh, of, of engagement because we are, I mean, even though we're a client, uh, a government entity, we do have um, you know, different framework agreements with um, different architectural entities to help us design and um, it, with our in-house design studio, which because we keep our, our internal team um, quite lean so we do rely on the industry to help us um, achieve the things we need to achieve i think the best thing would be if you would like to write to me directly we can elaborate that conversation and yes to be able to build or design here in kingdom you do need to um, have a partnership with a local architect um, or the project that you're designing needs to be under a um, <clears throat> or the people that you're working with need uh, need to ask you to tee up with a local um, entity to take the responsibility of the architect of record. More often, that's how we deal with foreign and foreign architectural companies. They do, you know, not up to a detailed level of design to make sure the design intent is is kept, and then the. Um, in terms of whatever the architect of record is going to offer in terms of code, et cetera, um, you, you, they usually partner with a local firm. Uh, but we could also assist you with a list of local firms um, who we've pre-qualified so that um, you, so we can help you in your search for someone to tee up with. Okay, thanks for the, for the answer. Let's see, there is another one from Daniela Baldo. 
is it still possible to participate to the competition for the 100 architects? We would be interested. Could you inform us on the procedure to candidate? Thanks. I would, I would suggest if there's someone in, in, uh, from your side who's coordinating this, that anyone who's interested um, be consolidated in one list and that list be sent to me so we can evaluate the architectural firms and include them in the, in the program. It is still possible to participate. We're still refining that list. Yeah, I think that we can uh, we can coordinate uh, the Italian companies uh, for sure. So uh, we will be in touch with them, and we are ready since now to uh, receive their information and their request of information for further development. Thanks a lot. So the next question is from Gianmarco Piacenti. Uh, Piacenti Spa is registered in Riyadh. I'd like to know which are the steps to participate in projects and works in Alula. So who is going to, to answer to this question? Probably the... I will take this. Um, so as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, we are using uh, SAP Ariba as a platform to register and pre-qualify all our uh, potential partners or vendors to deal with RCU. So I will encourage anyone who does have uh, an area of interest to work with RCU in the future projects to get into the portal and get registered and also get pre-qualified and identify the categories and communities that they are capable of delivering. As we are going to release uh, any RFQs or RFPs relevant to the projects through the uh, portal only. Thank you. So we have another question from Giacomo. What do you think are the right concrete steps for a design studio to have the opportunity to enter one of the developments expected in the coming years? So you can answer this, uh, this question. Eamon, maybe you could take that one again. Um, yes, and actually uh, it will be identical response to the previous one. So any future uh, project going to be released from RCU in the coming future, it's going to be released through our uh, portal. And uh, definitely uh, in any steps when we are uh, looking to release any project to the market, we evaluate the database and the registered vendor base we have. And accordingly, we uh, go through the process of uh, inviting. So what I uh, recommend is to get registered. If you have any further information in reference to a specific uh, project or credentials, you can share that as part of the registration process and we will be looking into that. Okay, thanks a lot, Mr. Bagawi. Another question from Giovanni Simeone. We intend to participate as a group of companies and academic research centers in a temporary association. Shall all the partners register or is it enough to register the proposal coordinator? So I leave to you. Yes, so basically, uh, usually uh, uh, the registrations will be with the party which is going to have the contractual engagement with RCU. So if the coordinator is going to be the focal point of contacts in reference to these contractual engagements, then it's the party to be registered, but it does not prevent the others to be registered in case if uh, any potential direct engagements in the future. Okay, thanks a lot. There is another question. Yes, from Hikem. Is there any local regulatory directive that's currently driving the smart city solutions, implementations and projects? Yes, yeah, so I can take that one. Um, there, are, uh, there aren't local regulatory directives, but there are national uh, directives. And we, we have a smart city director that's just joined our um, county zoning and planning group that I'm working closely with for the development of the um, codes and standards framework that we will be using to deploy our smart city solutions as we build out what that um, that platform will sit on. 
in addition to that, our new Smart Cities director came out of the MUMRA program, uh, which is for, at, a, at a national level that was developed for the municipalities. And we are looking to move it um, ourselves forward along the same path to coordinate at the national level. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, another question now, it is uh, this one. I wonder if there will be any tender for the security of the cultural and archaeal sites, but also infrastructures. I mean equipment for security of the sensitive infrastructure. So this is the question I leave to you for the answer. Joanna, is that you or me? Yeah, I'm sorry. I was talking and I was on mute. <laughs> sorry about that. We do have a very robust uh, security, both physical and cybersecurity teams that look at cultural and archaeological sites for protection, as well as look at uh, major infrastructure components for security protection, um, bearing in mind the, the, the level of protection that's needed in the environment, the tourism environment that, that we have, and weighing that so that we don't uh, overdo the security, but we also don't uh, leave ourselves vulnerable. So, so the answer is yes, we, we are looking at that. There are tenders that are coming out on a rolling basis now related to our security. So the, another question from Flavio, we are an Italian company that deals with space technology. IoT and other solutions, and we apply them to sport and tourism by encouraging it, digitizing it, making it multimedia together with cultural reality. Where would our skills fit and how could we open up? So it's quite a complex question. Who is going to answer? It, it really would depend on what the technology is, what your, your solution is, and, and what your data analytics look like to be able to define where it would fit within our RCU system. We work on a fairly open platform collaboratively, and we're looking at right now the types of data analytics that we want to set up for Alula County to be able to support uh, the tourism and heritage and archaeology and, um, you know, and the arts and culture with an open platform. So if you have analytical systems in these areas, we would definitely be interested in hearing from you and please come forward to us, contact one of us, and we can set up um, uh, presentations where you can come in and present to us what you have in mind and we can invite the appropriate people that would be interested. Very good, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. So I don't know if there are other questions. That was the last one, Enrico. I think ah, this was up. the last one? Okay, very good. So um, so we can, we can uh, finish, uh, we can uh, conclude the webinar. And I would like to say that uh, I saw the number of the participants uh, during the, uh, the whole webinar. It, is between, it was between 110 and 120, so it is a very high number. And I think it is a clear sign of the strong interest for Alula development projects. I wish the Italian companies may, may become partners of uh, uh, Alula Royal Commission. And uh, under this point of view, it seems very clear that uh, for the interested companies, uh, it will be important to register on the RCU vendor list on the RCU portal so that they will be informed about the upcoming opportunities. They may also start a dialogue with the embassy, of course, with the Italian Trade Agency, with the Royal Commission for Arula, in particular for those companies that are really willing to develop a business uh, partnership. Uh, Italian Trade Agency office is uh, uh, at your complete disposal in the next months for more information and assistance. And we are willing to help you to decide if this market and in particular the Alula development projects are really interesting for your company. So I think that uh, uh, the embassy and the Italian Trade Agency can have a role of a sort of filter uh, um, as a, at a preliminary uh, level. And uh, I think that uh, it will be essential also to have uh, 
a, a very good connection and a constant dialogue with the Royal Commission uh, in order to uh, so that the, 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 the questions from the companies and their interest is not going to, uh, to be uh, too much, to, to put too much pressure. So uh, we, are, we are cooperating together on this issue and I think that uh, our common aim is to uh, help Italian companies with their expertise and with their high quality to, to become really a, a good partner of this uh, uh, wonderful project. And uh, I think that uh, today it has been a first uh, very important step uh, uh, in, in, uh, in this direction. So I don't know if, uh, if uh, there are not other, other questions as it seems. Uh, I think that we can, uh, we can uh, conclude now here this, uh, this webinar and I really thank all the participants and uh, the representatives of the Royal Commission for their very interesting overviews and uh, I am sure that the Italian companies uh, have benefited from uh, a, a real uh, interesting and new information uh, regarding the, the developments that are, are going on. So uh, thanks a lot to everybody and uh, see you soon. Thank you, Enrique. And uh, if I may just add one last comment, please, that uh, for any organization would like to approach RCU in reference to the registrations or to set up meeting with the relevant departments, please feel free to email srm at rcu.gov.sa, which is available in the portal. This is the supplier relationship management uh, function, which will coordinate as a focal point of contact any inquiries related to the registrations or pre-qualifications or requesting any presentations uh, with any of the business units within RCU. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot, Ayam, for your information and uh, so have a nice day and uh, really see you soon for further development and the follow-up see you bye thank you very much bye bye, bye. thank you everyone bye 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 bye, bye, -bye. Okay, we can...